Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Creative Adventures. Long time no soap. It's actually been probably a month and a half, maybe two months since I've made a batch of soap. Um, I mentioned on the description of my last video that my real job has just been taking up a whole lot of time. I've had to travel. I went out to Colorado for a week for my job and we went on a little mini vacation last weekend to up to Baltimore, which is not very far away, for our annual tradition of Maryland Death Fest. Uh, so I've just not had a whole lot of time to do anything, but I am finally getting back into soap because I am almost out of everything I've made. So it's time for me to rebuild my stockpile. So today I'm making something completely new. Okay, well not entirely. This is my standard soap recipe that I have uh, developed and have come to love. So I will have that on my blog. The link for my blog will be in the description below. But this is a new color combination, a new scent, and the scent is from a new company that I have not tried before. Um, so I'm excited to see how this one turns out. I'm going to be using my standard two pound loaf mold for this. It is really about time for me to upgrade to a bigger mold. Um, but I'm going to be using my standard two pound loaf mold and I'm going to just do a, it's a spoon swirl, but I'm going to use a chopstick to do it. So we'll see how that goes. The scent I'm using today is called Dragon's Blood. Yep, just like the incense. And let me tell you, this smells exactly like the incense. I've already got my fragrance oil measured out over here and just having it seen in this area, it smells like a new age shop in here with all of the incense that's going. And I love incense, we burn it all the time and this is one of my favorites. How I'm going to feel about it in a soap, I'm not sure, but <laughs> I decided to try it. Also, this is from Essential Depot. I have ordered lye and shea butter and things like that from them before. I have never ordered any of their fragrances. So the last time I made an order, I just bought um, a ton of different fragrances to try. This is one of them. I'm actually gonna be making another soap today. I will also be filming that and it's going to be another one of their fragrances. So I'm excited to see how I like their fragrance oils. What I do know is I don't like that their website doesn't give specific usages for each individual oil. Um, I'm used to ordering from like Wholesale Supplies Plus and Brambleberry and each individual oil that they have gives a percentage, like a safe percentage usage for different products from soap to lotions to lip balms or whatever. This site does not. They give you their recommendation for all of their fragrance oils. It is, it is one recommendation for all of them and it just says you can use more if you like. I'd really like to have the actual full specs on these of what's safe to use in products but um, so I'm going on the low end of what their recommendation is and we'll see how it goes. So since this is a dragon's blood soap, um, this is the oil for it and you can see just how dark that is. It's obviously going to discolor the soap. So I'm actually going to be coloring the majority of my soap black using our activated charcoal. Uh, you've seen me use this before in that facial soap that I made. Uh, but I'm going to do a few other colors, just small amounts of them to just kind of swirl in that I'm hoping will look like little wisps of fire. So I've got my um, Crimson Red Wine Mica that I have used in lip balm and soap previously. Uh, this is from Wholesale Supplies. All, all of these other colors are from Wholesale Supplies Plus, by the way. But this is uh, Crimson Red Wine Mica. And then I've got uh, Siesta Sunset Orange. That one's really pretty. And then you've seen me use this one as well. It's the Golden Pineapple. I use that in the Pineapple Cilantro Soap. So those are the three colors that I'm going to be just kind of wisping into this with a spoon swirl. So since I've been making soap for a while now and I've done a lot of videos where I showed you the weighing process and actually measuring out all of my ingredients, I decided that I'm not gonna video that part anymore because it just makes my videos unnecessarily long. So I've already weighed out all of my oils, I've already mixed up my lye solution and weighed out my fragrance oil, and they've actually already cooled down too, so we can just get started soaping. Uh, they've been sitting out most of the morning, so my oils are at 81 degrees, and my lye water is at 88. So these are not quite room temperature, but almost, so they're ready to go. All right, so first things first, as usual, I'm going to add in two teaspoons of sodium lactate to my lye and water mixture here. It's about a teaspoon per pound of oils is the usage rate for sodium lactate. 
Again, this is a salt, so it actually hardens your bar and allows you to unmold it a little bit faster. All right, that's all mixed in. And my oil is one last stir. Get those out of the way. And we can go ahead and start the mixing. Now, if you want to watch one of my previous videos where I do this start to finish, including weighing all the oils, I will link one of those up for you in the corner. One of these corners. I can't ever remember. I think it's this I think it's this corner. All right. Stick blender in. Pour our lye solution down the shaft of the blender. Try to avoid oil, air bubbles if we can. And we're done with that. All right, now I'm gonna mix this to emulsification and then I'm gonna split this off into my little containers over here so I can add the colorant. I don't want it to get too thick on me before I add the colorant because I'm gonna to need to mix it pretty good to get all of these powders mixed in. So just to emulsification and then we will split it up. All right, we are at the absolute lightest of trace. So I'm going to split this off, or I'm gonna split a little bit off into these three containers, not much at all. I want the majority of my batch to be black. So just a tiny bit in each of these. I mean, it really is a tiny, tiny amount. I don't think this is going to take much color at all. All right, so the majority of my soap, let's see if that's about even. I need a little bit more in this one and a little bit more in this one. All right. Catch those little dribbles there. Okay, so those are pretty even. As you can see, it is a like tiny, tiny amount of soap. Uh, the majority of my batch is over here. So, I don't think it's going to take much color at all. So I'm going to start with a quarter teaspoon. I'm gonna add yellow to this one. Ooh, that's bright. Orange to this one. And red to this one. Now, I'm not gonna be putting any of my fragrance oil in these colors because it is so dark, I have no idea how it's gonna discolor. And I feel like it's probably got a little bit of vanilla in it as well, which has a tendency to brown, uh, cause things to go brown. So I'm going to put all of my fragrance oil into this batch, which is going to be black. So let me go ahead and add my activated charcoal. I'm gonna go with, let's see. I'm gonna start with a half a teaspoon if I remember from that face soap, it did not take as much as you would think to get this whole batch black. I mean, that stuff is super, super pigmented. I'm gonna put this off to the side. I'm gonna start with my colors. Okay. Starting with my yellow. Moving on to my orange. And finally my red. Okay, I'm good with that. Move these back off to the side. I'm gonna stir in that activated jar coal first because I don't want it to poof up everywhere. Yeah, I'm gonna need more. I can already tell that's not as dark as I want it. I'm gonna add another half tablespoon and hopefully get back to the color I'm looking for. Now I'm going to mix this one up. I'm not going to mix these any more than I already have. I'm going to leave them at this like super light trays, but I'm going to go ahead and mix this one up a little bit thicker um, so that when I pour, it doesn't just sink straight down to the bottom. I will have a chance to spoon swirl it a little bit. Let me go ahead and add my fragrance oil in and maybe that will accelerate it just a tad. 
So all of my dragon's blood is going into this black batch. Give that a stir. <laughs> that smells so funny. I mean, it is it is true to life dragon's blood incense for real. I think my husband's gonna like this one a lot. All right, we're starting to get a little bit thicker now. We're at a definite light tray, somewhere between light and medium. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop it there. Use a little spatula here to uh, scrape off what I can. Let's get this in the mold. So I've got my two pound loaf mold here. This one's from Brambleberry. And I've just got it sitting on a sheet pan covered with a paper towel. That's just so that I can more easily transport it into my craft room so that I can seal it off where none of my pets can get to it or anything. So I'm gonna pour a layer of this black into my mold. Probably about half of it and make a mess, of course, while I'm doing it. Because that's what I do. Okay. I'm gonna tap that down a bit, and then I'm gonna take my other colors and just pour them from way up high. And I'm only gonna pour about half of them. Pour the rest of my black. And the rest of my colors. to take my chopstick of hair, tap that down just a little bit, and I'm going to take the fat end of it and I'm just going to kind of stick it in and like do some loop-de-loops just and move my way down. Now I'm going to take the last of this black because I haven't scraped the bowl out yet. So I'm just going to scrape the bowl and kind of like try to spread this last of it out on top as much as possible. And then Take the last of my colors, because there's still a little bit left in there too, just from not scraping it out. I'm just gonna try to dribble it on top.
So now I'm going to take the smaller end of my chopstick and just kind of clean up this edge or clean up the top and do a little swirl design in it so that the top looks nice and intentional. <laughs> um, see how it goes. Here's what it looks like wet. Um, all of these colors should darken up a bit as it sets. I don't really know what this one's gonna look like. I was just winging it as usual so I guess we'll see in about 24 hours when it's time for the cut. So we'll see you then. Alright guys we are back. It has been about 30 hours which is longer than I normally wait to cut my soaps. But I, yesterday was Sunday and I had to go to work today. So this was the soonest I could get to it. Um, and actually, I think I might start waiting about this long for all my future soaps because this thing is nice and hard. It came out of the mold perfectly. Um, I've got no broken edges. Uh, it just, this was just much nicer. So let's talk about how this looks. <laughs> Um, I am not super stoked about the top of this. Um, <clears throat> these colors came out extremely muted. I don't know, I, I think I just, I definitely should have used more of the mica, at least in my red, possibly in my orange as well. I'm not real sure. I definitely should have put more mica into the red because it is really odd looking on top. It's kind of funny, whenever I took it into my craft room, I asked Chris to come in because I wanted to see if he could recognize the scent because he loves incense so much. Um, and I was like, I was like, what do you think this one is? And he looked at it and didn't smell it and asked me if it was Rumelade. So yeah, not exactly what I was going for. Uh, I have no idea what the inside of the soap is going to look like because I've never done a spoon swirl before and I don't even know if I did it right. So we're just going to get to cutting and see what we have because I am not real sure at this point. <clears throat> oh, I need to tighten that string. Well, that's interesting. Huh. Uh, I don't hate it on the inside actually. It's a lot more like splotchy than I was expecting. I thought it would be a little bit more swirly looking. Maybe I, I thought I was swirling it too much, but now I'm wondering if maybe I didn't swirl it enough. Uh, that's more like what I was expecting it to look like. And this is the end of the bar, like the actual far end. That's the part that I just cut. So let's cut a little bit more. Let's cut a few more in and see how it's looking further into the soap. Yeah, tighten my little guitar string here though. All right, there we go. I do want to say though that the scent does not seem to have dissipated any at all throughout the uh, saponification process. This smells exactly like I did when I put it in. It is a really, really nice, strong dragon's blood scent. Like I will. I wasn't sure how I was gonna feel about this as soap. And of course I haven't actually used it in the shower yet, so maybe I should wait until I wake up to that scent one day. But um, if you like a good dragon's blood scent, this is very true to life and it is strong. And I use less of that fragrance oil of that brand than I normally would of other fragrance oils of other brands. So yeah, I am really impressed with that Essential Depot fragrance oil. If you'll remember, that's the first time I've used a fragrance oil from that company. Um, but I am super happy with that. All right, let's give it a go. Okay, I'm starting to get a little bit more swirl here as I'm cutting. 
I like that a lot. That's actually, I'm still not happy with the darkness of the colors of the red, especially the red's kind of like a pink, which is not at all what I was going for. That color is called crimson red wine. You know what? And now that I'm seeing this orange in the middle, I definitely should have used more orange too because it is not bright at all. It is just barely darker than that yellow that I used. You know, I still think that this is going to be a really pretty design for the scent that it is because it's just kind of unusual and um, kind of like wispy looking little bits floating around in there. No, is it, is it exactly what I wanted? No, but I actually think it's pretty cool, so. <clears throat> Trial and error. That one turned out real nice. That was more like what I was expecting them to look like all the way through. And to be honest, most of them do, but I just particularly like that swirl. And there's the final piece. I really like the end though. I, I, that almost looks like a silhouette sunset or something. You know what? These colors would be really pretty for a silhouette sunset. I'll have to keep that in mind for a future soap. But there you have it. There is my Dragon's Blood Cold Process Soap. I used uh, my standard soap recipe, but added some activated charcoal to make this black color, which is also a very, very good ingredient for your skin. Definitely learned a lesson with these micas. Um, should have used a lot more, especially of the red and orange, to get a deeper, richer color. They may still uh, darken up some as this cures, but it's been almost two days now, so I don't expect they're gonna darken up too, too terribly much. Uh, but it's still a really neat looking soap. I'm happy with it. It smells amazing. Way to go Essential Depot on this fragrance oil because it's very true to life. Um, it didn't dissipate at all throughout the saponification process. We'll see in a few weeks if it um, lasts throughout the cure. But right now, this is actually one of the strongest smelling soaps that I've made so far. It, it is really, really a strong scent and it smells really good. So overall, I am super happy with this bar and uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed watching me make this Dragon's Blood Cold Process Soap. Uh, stay tuned for more soaping videos. And if you've got any uh, suggestions for future videos, let me know down in the comments below. I will have a link to uh, my blog, which will have this recipe on it, uh, as well as all of the uh, colorants and whatnot and the fragrance oils. I'll have links to all of that in my blog post for this soap. So uh, stay tuned for more soap videos to come and we'll see you next time on Creative Adventures.